Shall we all stand? Say hi to five people around you. You can give them a high five. You can. <laughs> Isn't it great to be here today? Amen. Let's all praise Him and thank God for His faithfulness, knowing that God's promises are always true and that he never changes saying God is thy faithfulness God is thy faithfulness oh God my father there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changes
next part, remembering that God has been faithful in our lives. He has given us peace. He has given us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Pardon for sin and the peace and endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to
our hands together to continue to praise and worship Him today. claim this, this together. Malaysia will be one of the economic giants of Asia, as our children have a very good future in this land. We thank you for special covering and wisdom over our authorities. Through Christ, we are living in the most blessed time where salvation free and free favor of God profusely abound over our church and family members with great breakthroughs and wisdom. We thank you for anointing, blessing, and covering upon our lead pastor, Pastor Joshua and Pastor Kerry, and, the, and their family members. Our leaders, zone pastors, and staff are shielded 
blessed and anointed with miracle working power. We are a fountainhead church as the barren places of the earth are refreshed. Our people are experiencing bursting wave of blessing, impacting people near and far, leaving great legacy as we give with irrational generosities. We believe that giving is not just about making donations, it's about making difference in the life of others. We declare all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us cast all our cares and worries to Him. For He is our refuge and He will deliver us from evil ones. I call upon your name, you deliver me from harm. In the shadow of your wings, no fear comes. I turn to you alone, Jesus, you're my guiding light. In the presence of your love, I will Let's sing together. No matter what the storm, you command the surging seas. At your word, there is a calm and a peace. Forever in your heart, I can never fall away. For your faithful love endures age to
may be seated. Would like to know more about the Holy Spirit? Head over to the Highlights playlist on our YouTube channel to learn how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will empower and lead you in your life and business. Wow! Welcome back to RLC Church. Do we have anyone that is new among us? May I ask you to raise your hands so that our ushers can come down and give you a welcome gift? No? Okay, maybe you're shy, but later on, after the service, you're welcome to join us at the Welcome Lounge, which is uh, at the corner there. Sorry, <laughs> down there. The All right, okay. Thank you. Hey, so e, when is Champs Futsal Clinic again? Champs Futsal Clinic is this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. There are still spaces. Champ Kids, you can still sign up. It's open to boys and girls ages 7 to 10. There will be experienced futsal players who will be coaching the kids. You may sign up at Champs today. There are still spaces for interchurch sports happening in July. If you love futsal or captain ball, come and join our team. Ablaze Youth, save the dates for the upcoming Ablaze Camp happening on 1st to 3rd of August. There will be more information to come, so stay tuned! You may sign up for all our events on Linktree, our website or our RLC app. Last week, four new pastors were ordained. Here's a quick recap of last week's Sacred Ordination service. Joy E. Sen Min, Andrew Li Wei Lun, Esther Chin Yen Hua, and Si Mei Yi, according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you are now to be set apart to the ministry of the gospel. There's a mantle upon you, a mantle of God's authority and God's approval. We recognize that, this church recognizes that, and God's Word affirms that. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the Reverend Joy Yi. Reverend Andrew Lee Weilun. from my sister in Christ who thanks God for blessing her business and family. She thanks the Lord for blessing her husband's company with a project. Even though it was just a pilot project, they are trusting God for more to come. She also thanks the Lord for blessing them with another grandchild. Wow, congratulations! She also thanks God that all her children are blessed with good jobs. Amen and praise the Lord. Well, praise God, wonderful Jesus. Uh, welcome everybody again. It is online. Um, yeah, we are ever in the area, do drop by and join us in the welcome lounge. And our host will be sharing with you coffee, some local food. Wonderful Jesus, the way we take offering every Sunday is based upon Psalm 96. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Lift up an offering. So it can be lift up the offering. Now, why do we lift up the offering? It's basically to, as an act of worship. So it's a continuation of the song that we sing, part of the worship. And also we lift up our hand to receive his blessing. And an amazing blessing here in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7. But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestly, and in your love for us, see that he also excel in this grace of giving. We talk about excellent spirit and the people of the secular world where they go for the motivation and seminars. They also talk about excellent spirit. How many must know God called us also to be excellent uh, in our giving? And the reason is because how many must know there's going to be as we excel in the grace, which of course is a privilege, the grace of giving. The grace of giving, grace speaks of privilege and uh, something that we uh, got the privilege of doing. And that grace of giving, as we 
So, Hamram does know, we're going to harvest the excellent spirit as well. Then this is going to be the supernatural excellent spirit. How many of you are ready to give and excel in the grace of giving today? All right, let's take offering right now. Giving is not just about making a donation. It's about making a difference in the life of others. If you'd like to tie or give an offering online, you can do an online transfer to our bank listed here. Or scan this QR code on your armrest or screen. You can fill in the reference section as you do the transfer, indicating your offering from yourself. Or fill in this card and drop it in our offering bag. We will send you a Rama scripture from Pastor. If you'd like to pass an offering to our office, do text our finance team. We are having an all-church ministry conference in September with Dr. Jim Ryan and his team. If you are curious about the ministries in our church, or would like to explore a new or different ministry, or already are serving in a ministry, all of you are welcome. There's a time in which we need a divine inflection point to recharge, to renew, and sometimes even to re-engineer. The, the All Church Ministry Conference is for you and your team members to be inspired and grow together. Join us. I'd love to share with you how we can create a culture of worship in our churches, as well as how women in leadership can play a vital role in what God is doing in the church today. Join me at the upcoming All Church Ministry Conference, where I'll share invaluable insights on training and retaining musicians. Plus, learn the art of seamless sound checks, mastering in-ear monitors, and much more. Don't miss out. Join me as I share valuable insights on training and retaining volunteers. Plus, learn how to leverage fun while discipling kids and create an engaging service for kids to build an everyday faith. It's gonna be so much fun, I hope to see you there. Hey, lift up the hands, worship, hallelujah, <laughs> sorry. Honored her pledge to give to missions by blessing her with a property deal. Wow. She shared that last afternoon when Pastor Joshua said that there's going to be a special mission offering collection on the 5th of May, she had already decided on the amount to give and she had it already. That evening, on her way to dinner with her family, she received a message from someone who wanted to view a property. She cut her dinner short and attended to the viewing. Praise the Lord, within one hour, the deal was fully closed. The owner paid her the fee on the spot and it was equal to two times what she wanted to give on Mission Collection Week. She's keeping the amount she wants to set aside so that she can present it to the Lord on Mission Offering Day. She's also going to challenge herself to give double and see the miracle again. Wow, praise God! Mission Sunday is on 5th of May. As we honour God with our giving, God will definitely pour His blessings more than we can imagine. Amen. Zaya and God provided within an hour double the desire that he, she has. Some of us know that God can provide uh, whatever you want to do, uh, excel in even our mission uh, giving this coming uh, Mission Sunday. And it was Norma, no more. So it's going to be Norma, no more. Okay, lift up our hands. Father, thank you for this beautiful uh, opportunity to present our offering to you as an act of worship. Thank you, Lord Jesus, we as we excel in this grace, this privilege of giving. Lord, you've got to release upon each and every one of us the spirit of excellence in our work, in our business, in our relationship, every areas of our life. In Jesus' most precious name, and all of you will say, Amen. Amen. Wonderful Jesus. Wow, welcome everybody. And of course, we'd like to welcome Pastor Vidin, Pastor Margaret. They're back home. And when they're rested well from all the jet lags, <laughs> we're going to give us a prophetic message on the Sundays. Wonderful Jesus, hallelujah. And of course, uh, in Mission Month, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about some of the mission partners are, are doing. Watch this. Hey, everyone. 
This is Pastor Daniel and Connie Ong, all the way from Renton, Washington, USA. We bring greetings to you and blessing to you. Uh, we want to greet Pastor Joshua and Pastor Kerry, the leadership team, and all of you congregation. We bless you today. We want to say thank you for your prayers and your support to us. Just a, a couple weeks ago, Pastor Ong came back from Ghana and he had an amazingly fruitful time there. He did a, le a leadership seminar for all the leaders and then also was able to meet up with the pastors from the various churches. And he met up with our pastor Godfrey from Nigeria and they're spearheading more church planting, intense church planting and wanting to move out beyond Nigeria to Cameroon and the surrounding countries as well. We want to say thank you for your prayers and support all these years. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord prosper you this year. And I know this year, 2024, God have greater things for us. We ourselves here are praying and believing God for a greater harvest to come all over the world. We are praying that we can do more church planting to see more people disciple for the Lord Jesus Christ. We definitely could not do any of this without you, seriously. We thank you from the bottoms of our heart for all that you've sacrificially given and all the ways you have prayed for us. And we know that is the reason that we're able to see the fruit of our labor. May Thank the Lord you. bless you. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Praise God, and because of your faithful giving, be able to support this lovely, amazing couple. Since the time they were uh, in Japan for a season and then to Ghana for many years, they're planting many churches and now back to uh, the States, and they're still continually uh, overseeing the churches they have planted and continue to plant more churches. And it's all because of you guys. And, and remember, uh, Connie was saying, seriously, they can't do this without your giving. That means, how many of us know, your giving is not just making a donation. It is making a difference. Secondly, so we are not making a donation. We are making a difference. Why? Because we give in an excellent spirit and other people say, Amen. Praise God. Wonderful Jesus. Do remember to invite friends to come every Sunday and a new series on identity. How many of you are ready for the word of God? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this is the day that you have made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We declare this week to be a week of great waves, of waves of breakthrough and experiencing your goodness in every moment of our life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this great opportunity to hear your word over the heart and mind to what you have installed for us. In the name of Jesus, we rebuild and bind Every foul, wicked, evil spirit, go from here right now in Jesus' name that your word may have free course. In the midst of us and other people say, Amen. 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 Identity and impact. This is the new series. And uh, you know, talk about identity today. There is an identity crisis. Who am I? Am I a he, she, or it? And uh, legislative uh, council all over the world are trying to legislate. No, no, no. Go back all the way to Adam, <laughs> where... Remember, after Adam sinned, he was hiding. He felt naked. He lost his identity. And God says, where are you, Adam? Where are you? Not that he lost the location, lost GPN. It's just that God is assuring to Adam, God is still a searching God. Not just a searching God, but also a covering God. He covered Adam and Eve with not the fig leaves they tried to do it themselves, covering themselves, but no, animal skin, which points to Christ. And amazing, all right? The gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer to our identity. They can do all the legislation, uh, defining whether you're he or she or it. No, it's the gospel that's going to make a difference in other people, say. And we talk about it, um, how Jesus faced the greatest temptation. 
if you are the son of God. And um, wow, uh, greatest temptation in me to face is, uh, is the depth of our identity in Christ. So important for us to know who we are in Christ because the gospel is the answer. The gospel tells us, how many must know, we are new creation in Christ. You notice the devil tempted Jesus, if you are the son, turn this uh, stone into bread. And Jesus didn't bother to do it. Why? <laughs> he doesn't have to prove his identity because the Father in heaven already said weeks ago at his baptism, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. You notice the devil very subtly removed the word beloved. If you are the son, very subtly remove the word beloved because God doesn't want, uh, the devil doesn't want you to know you are beloved. That's the reason why uh, when Adam and you feel naked and uh, God says, who told you you are naked? You know, sometimes we listen to all those negative voices. You are not this, you are not that. No, no, no. Listen to the heavenly father's voice. All right. We have the voice of blessing in the apps, a voice of thousand for increase. Listen to the amazing promises. It's free all in the apps, all right? And the Father said, you are fully accepted as Christ is accepted. The Father said that your value already determined 2,000 years ago when Christ died for us on the cross. We're going to live a very frustrated life trying to prove our worth when I worked already set up by the gospel of Christ 2,000 years ago. And uh, when you are secure in your identity, you're not going to be afraid of failure. Today, many people, they are, when, they give, when you give them feedback, they get angry, upset, and then they actually rob themselves of improvement, of excellence, because they are not open to feedback. The reason is because they are insecure. They, they are not secure in their identity in Christ. They become very defensive. No, no, no. When you are secure in Christ, people give you feedback, how to improve your life, your business. You, you say, come on, give me. I not just want feedback. I crave for feedback. Why? Because you see failure as an education. All right? If you've not been failing, it means you have not been trying new things. All right? Today, we're looking into an episode of how a Mr. Failure confounded even the emperor of the world empire of the day. I'm talking about Moses, how... Uh, he called himself Mr. Failure. He sees himself as Mr. Failure. And how God used him, all right, despite the failures and doing great exploits. And it all started with this young man with a passion. I mean, he, he really had a design, sacrificial way to serve and fulfill his calling. He was devoted. He was passionate. Hebrew 11 tells us. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. Amazing sacrifice. Leaving the palace. Huh? That is sacrifice. But he made a major blunder in his life. It was something unwise that he did. He kind of uh, tried to protect his fellow people and committing murder. He got to run for his life in the prime of his life. He undergo a major career change. He got a hike in the backside of the desert for 40 years. Can I imagine, imagine when he was in the wilderness at the backside of the desert, I can imagine he would be feeling all washed up uh, and all, he felt his life is all finished and uh, maybe some of you are like Moses' situation. You make mistakes, you make plunders, you make a mess of your life. Maybe you didn't do well in your studies. You wasted your uh, the parents' money and didn't really do well in your study, you look back and regret, I wish I would do better in my examinations. Now maybe um, you being a mess in your relationship, didn't spend enough time with the family, and you're losing your spouse, losing your kids, or maybe make an ugly choice in the business and, and you, you feel that uh, everything is finished. And humble must know that life is not finished until God say, it is finished. Today, I want to share with you how this Mr. Failure confounded even the emperor of his day, the Pharaoh. And uh, basically, we can pick up some key points from this passage. Revelation the truth. All right, number one, it is not what you can do, but what God can do. You know, Moses has a great 
and genuine call, but he plundered, make a mess because of the impulsive uh, feeling. He followed his uh, emotion, uh, and basically, how much know when you go according to your feeling is just the flesh, human flesh. Romans 8, verse 8 says, Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. And uh, the point, the beautiful truth from the story of this Mr. Failure is this. No matter what blunders that you make, how many must know? How many must know it's not uh, easy to jeopardize God's plan in your life? See, God's plan for your life is not based upon you making all the good choices. God knows the stupid, ugly choices you're going to make, but he has already a comeback. It is not just he coming to your life and undo the mess. It's not just he coming to you just giving you forgiveness of your past. No, no, no. He is going to uh, reset your life. Man, he is going to cause that uh, change, a repurpose in your life. And other people say, and uh, reignite the calling that you have. You never lose your calling, and other people say. The key thing is the word come, C-O-M-E, come. Say come. Come to his presence, come as you are, and come and see what God can do in your life. First and foremost, come to his presence. You recall last week, Dr. Jim was preaching here, and one of the things he mentioned, COVID did. The three and a half years of lockdown, intermittent lockdown, what are the signs of uh, people getting infected with COVID? You lost your taste. You lost your taste. And also you lost energy. And you take months, some of us, to recover. Uh, they call it the long COVID. You, you just lost your energy. You just can't walk the way you want to walk. You can't run. You can't do all the push up the way you wanted to do. You lost your energy. And of course, spiritually losing your passion. And one of the key reasons why we lose that is because we lost connection. Now, during the lockdown, there's no choice. <laughs> I was watching a YouTube video preparing the trip to Turkey and how this couple uh, traveling in a caravan when they travel around the world was locked down in Turkey during the pandemic for almost three months. Man, you don't want to be in a van for three months, all right, locked down. And we are locked down because of no choice. But how many must know, once now we are out. We are not locked down, the Bible tells us, Hebrew 10. We should not stop gathering together with other believers, as some of you are doing. Instead, we must continue to encourage each other even more as we see the day of the Lord coming. You should not stop gathering. How many of us know that is God's command? All right? Because otherwise, we're going to continue to lose our taste, lose our energy, lose our passion, because we lose connection. And um, you recall Dr. Jim was saying, you cannot fully recover from COVID. You cannot fully recover your life if you are doing what the devil wants you to do which is to be disconnected, all right? It's great to be able to go online during a season of lockdown. Many of our staff learn to do YouTube video. <laughs> we were forced to it, but how many of us know? It's good to watch online, and, but you can get great information, but you can't get impartation. You can't get inspiration because how many of us know impartation only come when there is an actual connection, physical gathering? Romans 1, 11. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Why did Paul long to see? All right, the, uh, uh, writing, when he was in prison, he was locked down. But he longed to see them in person, physically, because that is the key way to release impartation and inspiration, to encourage, especially in the last. Come, all right? Come to his presence. Don't be disconnected and come as you are. Um, Moses, when he was in the backside of the desert one day, he was walking up the mountain of God. He saw something strange. There was a shrub 
or bush on fire, but it was not burned. Let's pick up the story, Exodus 3. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. Now what is this shrub or bush? <laughs> well, look at the context, the cultural context. Shrubs and bush are often used to depict the people of God. You can see this picture often. If you go to the Holy Land, you will see the ancient synagogue. Very often engraved on the walls of the synagogue are bushes or shrubs, which is a picture of God's people. And I must know, Moses saw his people uh, afflicted in Moses' context, 400 years of slavery. And he was afflicted because of ugly choices at the backside of the desert. A revelation dawned on him. Yeah, you may be going through affliction. You may be going through the consequences of the ugly choice in your life, but it cannot burn you up if you do the right thing. You come, you come as you are. Don't run away, all right? You know, God's call in your life is not based upon the assumption that you're going to make all the good choices. We, including your pastor, are going to make some bad choices. But God is not surprised when you make the bad choices because he has comebacks for every setbacks in your life. And the key is, come as you are. Take off your sandals. What does it mean? It's a picture of coming to God as you are, without pretense, without all the extra, trying to prove that you can do this, you can do that. How a master with all the failures. He has mercy for every of the ugly choices that you have. He has grace, which is greater than all your failures. Romans 5.20 says, but where sin abounded, grace has surpassed it and increased the more and super abounded. Wow, how many months the where sin abounded? <laughs> grace super abounded. Say it could be super abounded. Now let me ask you this question. Is this Pastor Joe Shaw's word? Am I trying to just comfort you? No, no. I'm telling you from the word. All right, super abounded. Now, does it mean that we encourage more sin, that we make bad choices? I don't think you want to make bad choices. Moses would not want to make the same choice again, murdering the, the, the Egyptian, and end up in the backside of desert for 40 years. But how many must know that when grace superabound means that you're going to get the enabling grace, all right? Not just to fix the wrong you have done, not just getting forgiveness, for that is important, foundational, getting the forgiveness of our sins. Not just fixing uh, the wrong, getting forgiveness, but repurposing. Say repurposing. Uh, maybe the wrong English, repurpose. All right, repurpose. To rekindle your call. You know, how many of you, your little boy, your grandchild or son, got stuck up? Uh, the three branches. You have told him don't, not to climb the tree, but end up, he's still there, and he was crying out, Dad! Dad! Oh, my grandchild would say, Tata! Tata! <laughs> How many imagine I would go there and say, why do you go up? Didn't I tell you not to go up? You want me to pick you up from the uh, treetop? <laughs> have you done your homework? <laughs> Uh, how, how's your GPS? Uh, uh, great point average. All right. Uh, how, how's your report card? Did you brush your teeth? No. Any right thinking dad will grab the child, grandchild immediately. All right. No, no matter how far off course you've gone, how many must know your God is a heavenly GPS? He's not going to shake his head and say, poor thing, you have made a bad choice. You're going to end up missing the best. That's what the devil might say. You make a bad choice, you miss the best. No, 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 no. Your father is like a heavenly GPS. No matter how off course you have gone, he will say, recalculation, reset. Six kilometers, there is a U-turn, you U-turn back, turn left, 
turn right. If you will just listen to him, not being disconnected, but come, come as you are. All right, God still have a destiny for you. He's not just going to forgive your sin. He's going to repurpose your life. He's going to rekindle the original call. All right, and you're not missing your greatest destiny. The key thing is don't run. Don't get disconnected. Don't run away from God. Don't run away from the church. All right, because you you you're gonna not get the impartation and not gonna get the inspiration. It's like the sick who needed medical treatment didn't want to see the doctor. Well, it's like the sick didn't want to be hospitalized, didn't want to get the treatment. Kidding is. Come, uh, John Maxwell says, "Life is ten percent what happens to me, and ninety percent of how you react to it." Yeah, you make a bad choice, but how many of us know God has come back? Come and see what God can do, and that's exactly what happened. Exodus three seven. And the Lord said, "I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in bondage, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters." For I know their sorrows, so I have come down to deliver them out of their hands and to bring them up from what, from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people to the Israelites out of Egypt. Wow. You know, while Moses was engrossed with what he can do, he walked ahead of God, and. Did something that they end up regretting for forty years, because his focus of what is what he can do. But let me tell you, it's not so much of what you can do; it's what God can do through you, if you just allow Him to. You know what He said here? What there are seven things that God will do, and I can preach a sermon on this seven points. But I'm going to just give you the outline: what God will do. I have seen. The oppression of my people. How many of us know God knows what you're going through? The hurt, the bitter situation of an estranged uh, relationship, and how you 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 cry day and night because of that wayward spouse. God see all those things. All right, I have seen the oppression of my people. And uh, if you focus on human being seeing for you, you're gonna be disappointed because no matter how good, even uh, your pastor, Pastor Joshua, or your zone pastor, they're not gonna able to comprehend, understand the pain you're going through. You felt bitter because pastor never asked. You focus on the wrong person. God sees the pain. God sees the sorrow. All right. Oh, 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 Pastor, my my husband don't understand me. My wife don't understand. Yeah, good to have a sympathetic spouse, but don't focus on it. My children not taking care of me. Sure, the Bible tells us when they take care of their parent, they're gonna have a long life, good life, healthy life. The Bible says all will go well with you. I'm sure they should do that, but as parents, don't look to them. Look to God. God sees. I have seen the oppression of my people, who were in bondage. I have heard their cry. Say,、so、I've heard their cry. You notice, nothing happened until they cried out to God. Nothing happened until they groaned. For four hundred years, they have been praying, maybe ritualistically. Maybe just say a prayer. I never like the phrase. Let's say a prayer. You know, you don't say a prayer. You cried out to God. You don't just say it. I heard their cry because of the taskmaster, and I know their sorrow. You look at human being to know all the adversity you're going through. You are going to be disappointed. I know their sorrow. I have come down. How many must know that person came down two thousand years ago? I have come down and deliver 
them out of their hands. You notice it says, uh, and to bring them up. He's not just come down delivering us. He's actually going to bring us up. He's not just coming to your life, whatever ugly choices you make, ref refixing the problem, the, the ugly music, he's going to repurpose your life. The key thing is don't stay away. Tell people that you know that have been staying away. Like what Dr. Jim was saying, you cannot fully recover doing what the devil wants you to do. Not just, not just come down, deliver them, but to bring them up. And now I'm sending you to, to Pharaoh and to bring my people out of Egypt. Wow, wow, wow. Seven things that only come about when you come. That's a key word. Come. 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 Come as you are. Come and see what he can do. And how many of us know how God has the solution before your problem arises? Exodus 3.19 but I know that Pharaoh will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. God, do you know the, 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 the problem that I'm facing, the sickness that, that I'm struggling with or loved one is struggling with? God said, he knows. He knows the problem. He knows the obstacles. He knows the Pharaohs in your life. You know, the, if you just Google Google the word Pharaoh. It's not just the emperor. It's also a picture of pride. All right? And, and people that stand in the way, the people that, that, that come across your path as an obstacle, God knows all those Pharaohs in your life. Pastor, that is my husband. No, 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 no. All right? Uh, for better or for worse, you say, uh, this is my choice. All right? And I know Pharaoh is going to harden. God says, I know Pharaoh is going to harden his heart and say no. When you say, let my people go. God knows. God knows the obstacle is immense. The Pharaoh, the people that are stricken with pride is out there to destroy you and your future. God knows they're going to say no. <laughs> and God knows they're going to say no, not just one time nine times or even ten times when a, when a yes become even a no later on remember the ten plagues with the last plague all right and then uh, pharaoh say okay go but then he come with his chariots chasing them but one thing i notice how many of us know the greater the no the greater the miracles I don't know, uh, we emerge end of the year and this year amidst immense challenges. Immense challenges for some of our staff as well. And uh, I notice the greater the no, the greater the breakthroughs. In the end of the day, I remember as though when they left Pharaoh's land, they left laden. Loaded. According to Psalm 105, laden, loaded with gold and silver. How many of us know that is back to pay for 400 years of slavery? How many of us know God remembers what you didn't get? God remembers the pain. It's payback day, and other people say, Amen. God will repay what. The locusts have eaten. He has a solution before the problem arises. Close with a story, an amazing story, testimony, in fact, not a story, testimony of a college professor. He was teaching in a very remote part of China. One day he was stricken with an excruciating stomach pain. And it's a small little remote town and the clinic doesn't have good facilities, no doctors, no good medicine. And the nurses attended to him say, make peace with your family members. 
ว้าวไม่เยอะ in pain sick and the doctor or nurse tell you make peace with your family members what is he trying to say it's done you're finished <laughs> and uh, how many of us know doctors don't have the final word we respect doctors doctors are great God has called them to an amazing job profession they try their best but how many of us know They don't have the final word, and uh, just about that time, this college uh, professor's father happened to be a pastor. Was leading a service in the states, conducting a service in the states, and uh, the pastor just paused. Don't know why, led to pray for the son, and. Uh, Considering time change from China and United States, almost uh, 12 hours. All right. If it is night here, day there. All right. And in the middle of the night, in pain, the pastor was in the day service praying for his son. Just about that time, there was a knock at the clinic door. There was a professor of medicine, a surgeon, renowned surgeon. That have treated even the United States president. He knocked at the door. I want to treat a very important American. Strange. <laughs> uh, this renowned surgeon doesn't know the college professor. The college professor doesn't know. But what happened is that two days ago, there was a knock at the door. Of this renowned surgeon, the two people dress immaculate dress, very very nicely dressed. Sir, we want you to go to this town to treat a very important person. Very important person. So quickly change. Took two days. Now, of course, China today have high-speed train. <laughs> I was told, but those days it was quite some time to go. By the time we reached, it was at the right time, and the surgeon was able to treat the college professor. But amazing, two days ago, God already sent someone, or rather, a, a two person, or maybe they are angels, to arrange the renowned surgeon. To treat this professor, because there was a pastor who was praying for his son in the midst of a service. God, how many must know, has a solution for the problem even before your problem arises. Whatever problem you may be facing, how many must know? Our God is a faithful God. Can we sing this song? A test to which of our eyes, great is Your faithfulness. Is Thy faithfulness, O oh God, God, my Father? There is no shadow. Forever will. 
great faithfulness is seen that 2,000 years ago, He came actually in person to die for us on the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. The Lord Jesus Christ said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Pour out for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Ola barasha, e la barahiri andala maraka. Come, come as you are. Come and see what he can do. Ola barasha, o maraka, e la andala maraka. The Lord is forever faithful. He's faithful to His promise. Some of you, you may not see that way. You may, you have faced a lot of challenges. You feel that the Lord might have forget you, or the Lord have neglected you, or leave you behind. But the Lord say, "I never, I have never leave you behind." The Lord want to remind us this morning. Again, that His faithfulness is not who you are, but who He is. We may have make the wrong choices that cause the business problem, but the Lord said, "I remember my promise. I remember my promise." He want you to know that He is forever faithful. Even though you may not be faithful, but He is forever faithful. He has prepared the best for you. Even you might have made the wrong decision, walk the wrong way or wrong path. But the Lord is telling you: if the GPS, if the ways can lead you back to the right path, how much more is your God that He is able to lead you back into the right path? So the Lord said, "Just cast your care upon Him, and do not keep looking back. Do not get panic when you face that situation. Do not keep looking back, but keep looking up. Keep looking up, for He is forever faithful. Every morning, new mercy. Every morning, new loving kindness. His grace is sufficient." I sense the Lord is opening a pathway. Someone you may see that there's no road, no path that you cannot get get through. But the Lord say, I see someone that you are at that point. But the Lord is opening a way for you. The Lord is opening a way for you. So do not worry. Do not keep looking back because when you keep looking back, you may get stuck and you cannot see that way. Which Allah He did not. Especially this section, the Lord is saying to someone, the Lord is opening the way and the path for you. Oh, shala hiriam. Oh, kurapa shala hiriam. And the Lord is saying to someone here, the Lord said, when He opened the door, no one can shut. No one can shut. Yes, you, there may looks like a lot of challenges that hinder, but the Lord said, the door that He opened for you, no one is able to shut. Oh, I see an opening. I see someone that you have some uh, some work in Southeast Asia, and the Lord is opening the way for you. Yeah, I see the door is opening for you. Receive that in Jesus' name. The Lord is releasing that favor, especially you need to go through all the authorities in the various country in Southeast Asia. The Lord is opening the way for you, and receive His favor. As you go forth, the Lord will prepare the people that you meet with the right person, and uh, the Lord will put words in your mouth that when you go forth, the doors open for you. It's somewhere in Southeast Asia. Receive that in Jesus' name. And the Lord is also launching someone out. The Lord is going to launch you to the deep. 
because they are they are a lot of treasure in the deep so the lord says that do not worry do not be fearful he is launching you to the deep always remember his faithfulness he's forever faithful amen hallelujah wonderful jesus let's sing this song and then receive the blessing His face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, the Lord smile on you, and release you His favor in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Here will be ready to pray with you. Just come forward. 